Hi, this is Esim Shariad from the Physics Department. Today, I will talk about Doppler-free saturated absorption spectroscopy of methane in the mid-infrared region. At first, I will talk about our target molecule methane and why mid-inference spectroscopy is so important. And we will discuss about line width broadening, which is an impending factor for spectroscopy. Then we will discuss what Doppler-free saturated spectroscopy means, and we will show our experimental setups and discuss some results. Let's talk about methane first. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas. It is 32 times more effective as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. That's why it has huge importance in atmospheric physics, atmospheric chemistry, and astrochemistry. Moreover, for fundamental molecular spectroscopy, high symmetry tetrahedral structures are very important to have better models and, and predictability. But very few high resolution data of methane in the mid eye region has been accurate. Also, Almost all organic molecules have strong mid eye spectra due to CH, NH, or OH stretch modes. That, that's why high resolution mid IR spectra is very important in general for all kinds of matter molecules. Spectral line broadening. Spectral lines are actually the fingerprints of a molecule or, or atoms. If we want to detect a, a molecule in a star or in the atmosphere we need to know their spectral lines now spectral line broadening could happen due to several reasons the fundamental and the most important one that we can never get rid of is natural broadening that comes from the heisenberg's uncertainty principle the more certain you become in time the more uncertainty is introduced into energy that's why the lines are broadened due to short excited state lifetime. The shorter the lifetime, the broader the spectral lines. Usually this broadening is described by a Lorentzian profile. The next spectral line broadening is pressure broadening. Next spectral line broadening is pressure broadening. This kind of broadening happens due to the collision in the molecular sample. It depends on the density and temperature of the gas. Usually this is also described by a Lorentzian profile. Finally, we have Doppler broadening. This broadening happens due to the velocity distribution of molecules. It depends on the frequency, mass, and temperature. And here, it's usually described by a Gaussian profile. In our experiment, we try to get rid of Doppler broadening because Doppler broadening is prominent over pressure broadening on natural broadening. What are the impacts of Doppler broadening? Suppose we have a ground state zero and two excited states one and two, and they are relatively close. If we plot our spectral line intensity versus frequency, we will see because the excited state one and two are very close, the transition from ground state energy will be close also. That's why in the frequency demands, we will have two peak very close to each other. But Due to the Doppler broadening, instead of seeing these two distinct peaks, we will see one big broadened line. And we will not be able to resolve these two close energy levels. This will also deteriorate our spectral accuracy and the ability to detail analyze, uh, do, do, to do detailed analysis of the molecular structures, which will eventually create difficulties on creating theoretical models for the molecules. So we need to get rid of this Doppler broadening. How we could do that? Now, what is Doppler broadening and why it happens? Doppler broadening ha happens due to Doppler effect. Now, what is Doppler effect? Suppose you are standing close to a train line and a train is coming towards you. You will see the siren of the train will go to a higher pitch when it is coming towards you and will go to a lower pitch when it's going from you. These two things happen because of the relative velocity between you, the observer, and the train. These two effects are called the blue shifts and the red shift respectively. 
Same thing happens with the molecule. Suppose we have a suppose we have a molecule sitting here, and it has a velocity component along the z-axis, which is vz. Now, if a laser comes towards it with the frequency omega, instead of experiencing the frequency omega due to the relative velocity, velocity, the molecule will experience a velocity, uh, experience a frequency omega plus omega vz by c depending on the speed of light and the relative velocity. Similarly, if the molecule is going this direction and the light is also going to the same direction, it will have a redshifted frequency. But what happens if a molecule do not have any component along the z-axis? I'm talking about the point when you are just standing in front of the trend line and the train is not coming towards you or not going away from you, just in front of you at that very instance. At that very instance, this molecule will not experience any blue shift or red shift, hence experiencing a Doppler free spectroscopy or Doppler free effect. So we will exploit this idea to get our Doppler free spectrum. Now, in case of only one probe laser beam, all molecules will contribute to an absorption line, hence exhibiting a Doppler broadening spectrum. But in case of our counter propagating pump and probe experiment, the ground state population will already be depleted by the high intensity pump. So the when, when uh, the probe will exhibit a dip in the spectrum for the Doppler free molecules. That means those molecules who will experience pump and probe simultaneously without any Doppler effect. This dip is called lambda dip, which is our Doppler free signal. Our pump beam will be modu modulated by an acoustic optical modulator, AOM. The transmission signal of the probe beam is lock amplified at modulation frequency. This will give us the desired Doppler free spectrum. This is our current experimental setup. We are using an optical parametric oscillator to generate our infrared, mid infrared laser. And I'm splitting this laser into two separate beams, pump and probe. The pump will be modulated by AOM and the Polarization of the pump will be changed from horizontal to vertical and will go this direction. The probe will have the opposite polarization from the pump so that the pump beam get reflected in this polarizing beam splitter, but the probe beam goes through. Here, the pump is going from left to right while the probe beam is going from right to left and they are overlapping. So we are achieving the counter propagating pump and probe experimental setup for Doppler free. We also have splitted the probe for, re a refer for re a reference and get the Doppler broaden signal. For doing the relative calibration of the wavelength, we are using uh, Italon. Here we are using to distinguish uh, to separate locking amplifier one for the Doppler free signal and one for the etalon and all of this output all both of the output from the locking amplifier is, go, is going to the PC jack card. This is how we are getting our spectrums. We are also using a reference laser because in mid infrared region is not visible. We are using this reference laser for doing alignments. Now the top one is the Doppler broadening signal. The middle one is our Doppler free signal and the bottom one is the Hytron database. So for methane, as we can see in the middle, with the Doppler broadened one, we cannot resolve this peak. But with our Doppler free spectrum, we could resolve this peak, which agrees with the theoretical Hytron database. This is very important. We will be using it to do a full scan of methane's P, Q, and R branches. And also you will be using this for other molecules also. 